All right. Well, it is the end of December, which means a couple things. It means Christmas. It means eggnog. But it also means game of the year. Um, and multiple sites have been putting out their games of the year now. Um, so I figure, let's get together. Let's have a nice little game of the year discussion. Uh, but it's not little because, um, I don't know about you guys, but 2017 has been an absolute banner year for gaming. Um, pretty much across all companies. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I, I think we're pretty much in agreement there. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves. Uh, Tom, why don't we start with you? Okay, well, hi. I'm SilverTom93, and I do very uh, very creative based youtube content so music um uh, sort of unreal engine tech demos i've started doing and just general gaming uh stuff on my channel awesome good to have you on no problem thanks for having me yeah what about you uh hello i'm super smash 77 i pretty much cover anything nintendo or fighting game related uh it's good to be here awesome well thank you i'm so sorry i totally didn't mean to like just like, I was just looking at my screen. Like, <laughs> no one can see this. Um, yeah, no, so uh, 2017 has been absolutely insane. Um, so I thought it'd be good to get fun to be fun to get together and just talk about our favorite games of the year. Now, last year, yep. uh, you and me, Super Smash 77, we did this and we counted down our top threes, uh, both of our top threes. There was no way I could just do three games this year. Again, it's just been crazy. So we're extending it to a top five. So it's each of our top five. And we'll kind of go around like round table uh, style where we'll each say our top fives and our fours, our threes, until we eventually work our way up to our personal games of the year. Now, this will also okay. be interesting because um, I have been playing games exclusively on the Switch and 3DS, whereas both of you have PS4s. Um, so there will definitely be some, some crossover, some overlap, but I'm yeah. really excited to see, uh, kind of who's got what. There's a few PS4 games in my list. Um, there was going to be a third one, but yeah, uh, I, that would have been a top seven or six. Well, Tom, since you weren't on our discussion last year, why don't you start us off with your top, with your number five, not your top five, your number okay. five. Okay, yeah. Okay, so number five on my list is the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy on PS4. Oh. Um, and that, it, I, I technically grew up with Crash Bandicoot, but I didn't actually play the original three um, until until now, basically. Um, I, I grew up with a lot of the spin-offs and the PS2 games. Um, but the, the Crash Insane Trilogy on PS4 is essentially a remake done right, like how a remake should be. Um, and it's it's essentially one of the best remakes of a 90s game I, I think I've ever played. It just remastered it perfectly and it felt spot on um, compared to the PS1 original. Um, I will say this, uh, that game is one of the biggest temptations to get a PS4 for me. Uh, yeah, it, it is, looks, definitely. It, like, cause I really liked... Um, I never played the third one, but I played Crash 1 and 2 way back in the day and those games were really good. Oh, uh, the, so playing a the remastered third one's version, the best one? That's what I've heard. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah. Um, but the the thing that's quite um, the thing that kind of made it stand out quite a lot this year is that it's very challenging. It it because it it's from a time where games didn't really have that many text or dialogue or instructions, and the physics were quite um, rigid. Like the, there's people who pick up this game right now and say, "Oh, this is really hard for 2017 standards. <laughs> where's the, where's the game manual? Where, why is it so rage-inducing? And it is quite rage-inducing. It's, it's not an easy game, but um, and I, th I think that's what made it stand out because it was when it when it first released, there were a lot of things going around in the media saying like, "Crash Bandicoot is the new Dark Souls. It's that difficult." <laughs> like, yeah. But it, it's it's a really uh, well-made game. I think uh, Activision and Vicarious Visions, they they pretty much nailed the Crash Bandicoot formula. They got it just right. I yeah. No, again, one of the biggest reasons I was tempted to get a PS4. Um, obviously, I didn't jump on that urge. But no, it does look really good. Uh, did you play this game at all, Super Smash? Yeah, I have actually played it, and I fear every level that has a bridge in it. Every. <laughs> Every level. <laughs> that bridge level in Crash 1. Oh, just I, I, ooh, that level. Nightmare inducing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. so Crash Bandicoot, very nice. Good, nice to kind of see. We've had a lot of game revivals this year, but nice to see him back in the swing of things. What about you? Yeah. What is your number five Super Smash 77? 
So I'm probably going to be setting the bar as low as it's going to go in this video. And my number five is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Oh, uh, okay. So on my notes, I actually put everything is pretty much terrible, but the gameplay is amazing. <laughs> and that, that about sums the game up. I mean, from the music to the graphics to the character selection, they pretty much got all of that wrong. But, but hey, they got the most important thing right, which is the gameplay, which might be one of the most fun fighting games ever released, but it's really sad that it has to come bundled with everything else. That <laughs> game is such a mixed bag of emotions for me, because I, I, I've actually, I don't own it, but I've played it with friends and whatnot, and the, the fact that Mega Man X and Zero are in a game together again, first, like, because I'm a huge Mega Man X fan, that is such a huge fanboy moment for me. Yeah. But then the rest of the game just exists the way it does. And, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I almost feel kind of bad for the dev team because, based on some rumors, apparently their budget was really, really bad. Yeah, that's kind of what I've heard, too. And then there was the whole licensing thing with the X-Men and, like, yeah. yeah. Apparently, apparently the, licensing, the licensing is really strict with Marvel, like... Um, on on the front cover and on the character select, they have to get the shade of the shades of the colors just right, and like <laughs> they 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 have to submit like a like an early version of the cover art to Marvel, and then they say, oh, just just move his hand up a little bit more, just <laughs> add a little bit of dark area on there. And I, I read about it somewhere online. It That's it hilarious. feels like it feel, it feels like <laughs> anything they try and do just goes through a lot of development hell. <laughs> yeah, that's what it kind of sounds like. That's um, actually hilarious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, they're so precise and like it needs to be just right. Uh, uh, it sounds like a very uh, all the developers they're quite perfectionists. Yeah, I think. Well, I mean, like th there are good things to be said about that game. Like you said, the gameplay is like the minute to minute gameplay is fun. It is engaging. Yeah. Just the marketing, the roster, of course, the visuals. It's just, yeah, it's just not quite up to uh, par, but it, uh, see, for me, like, I'm a gameplay first kind of guy, and if the gameplay is truly good, I am usually able to overlook some of the lesser parts of a game, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, I guess we'll move on to my top five, and keep, again, keep in mind, like, my, like, four through, like, se my three through, like, seven were all so close. I was having such a hard time. But I finally decided my number five is going to be Shovel Knight Spectre of Torment. Um, oh, okay. This game, uh, first of all, this is my favorite uh, campaign in the Shovel Knight series. I liked it more than the original, and I liked Plague of Shadows, but it, it wasn't that different from Shovel Knight itself. But no, Spectre of Torment is awesome. Um, if you uh, first, first of all, if you've got the original Shovel Knight, it's a free uh, update, free expansion. But this game, it completely changes how you might think a Shovel Knight game can play. Because whereas uh, the original Shovel Knight plays much more like kind of like a Mega Man game, like a much slower paced game, Spectre of Torment is almost like the Mega Man X to uh, Shovel Knight, whereas mm. it's a lot more momentum based. Uh, you know, forward momentum is kind of the name of the game. Um, we've also got kind of a darker story in this game too, which is actually a prequel to the original Shovel Knight. It kind of leads right into the events of um, Shovel Knight. Um, it's really cool just kind of how it all fits together and I will say this like even though there's no voice acting There is no like out of engine cutscenes like it's all pixels. It's all 8-bit or well, 8-bit styled This game tells a very good story mm. there's, there's a lot of retro games that do that um, Where like it's it's pixels, but you can kind of put together what the story can be behind it Yeah, and yeah. I haven't even mentioned the music like first of all like this is my favorite soundtrack of the year. Like, Jake Kaufman knows exactly how to make, like, punchy Mega Man 8-bit style songs. It's awesome. If you, like, even if you don't plan on playing the game, at least look up the soundtrack, because, oh, it's so good. I've never actually played a Shovel Knight game yet. <gasps> I, I feel I feel like I need to get it, because <laughs> it it's, I've, I've just seen it everywhere over the past few years. I'm like, eh, Shovel Knight, I think you, I'll pass for now. You and then it, sinner. Just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really need to get around to playing Shovel Knight. Man, Treasure Trove it, on it Switch. It looks so good. Treasure Trove on Switch. You're getting all the campaigns, and you're getting the King Knight campaign, which is going to be a free update next year. It's like, uh, well, in Canada, it's about like $25-ish, $30, I think, but it's a, it's a really good deal. Hmm. 
I feel like if, if I get some uh, Christmas money this year, I can put it on my uh, eShop account. Oh, yeah. I can probably get, probably get the Shovel Knight games. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, no, Spectre of Torment, it really, like, I wasn't... It's not that, like, I was surprised by how good it was, but because I, I, I knew it was going to be good, but, like, this game, like, it came out right at the beginning of the year, right alongside Breath of the Wild, and it's just stuck with me the whole year. Um, like, this is a game that was so good that I was actually able to take breaks from Breath of the Wild, which I'm sure we'll talk about later, um, to play this game. <laughs> so, uh, no, Spectre of Torment, a uh, really, really solid game. Yeah. All, right. All right. Well, Tom, what is your number four? All right, so carrying on from the retro pixel art and amazing music, uh, my number four is Sonic Mania. Ah. And, uh, okay, so I... I grew up with um, quite a fair few modern Sonic games, like Sonic Heroes, uh, Sonic Riders as well, and then like Sonic Unleashed. Um, but I also had some of the uh, Sonic Classic Collection games, where I actually learned a little bit more of like the backstory and w what the first original Sonic games were like. Um, so it, I kind of grew up like a 90s kid, but not actually in the 90s. <laughs> um, but Sonic Mania is a perfect like it, it's not a remake it's an, it's an entirely new game but with old environments like brought back in pixel art and a lot of new levels as well um, but I, I think when it was first announced what really fascinated me with the game was not only its visuals but the music it's just it, T Lopes the composer on the soundtrack did a phenomenal job on the on the game soundtrack I, it's one of the jazziest catchiest things ever <laughs> pretty much i i gotta say like uh first of all when i was just talking about specter of torment and it being my favorite soundtrack sonic mania was a very close second um yeah definitely. Like, um i am kind of the opposite of you i was never really a sonic fan at all um mm. i played i played the original and i played sonic 2 and again i've heard sonic 3 and knuckles is the best kind of in that original trilogy never actually played yep. that one um <laughs> i played um and I, one of my biggest gaming sins ever is that i 100 percent completed sonic and the secret rings i don't know oh why, i remember you telling me that i don't know why i ever did that to myself um but yeah so i've only played a few sonic games i think i also played sonic rush on the ds and that one was all right yeah um, that was good but, uh, yeah, so when I was seeing all this buzz about Sonic Mania, I was like, you know what, like, this this looks like it's... Tr it, it, here's what I think about Sonic Mania. It looks like it was trying to do... Or it looks like it did what New Super Mario Brothers tried to do for the Mario series. Like, New Super mm. Mario Brothers tried to kind of reinvent the classic Mario feel, but Sonic Mania absolutely nailed it, in my opinion. The... the, the Sega did have a failed attempt at redoing the uh, the classic Sonic games when they did uh, Sonic 4. Yes. <laughs> they, they, they did Sonic 4 in, like, what was it, like 2010 for the Wii and, and PS3, and that was basically just putting modern Sonic in a low-budget Green Hill Zone. Hey, I played um, that on my iPod 4. That was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that, that was a kind of really badly emulated attempt at getting classic Sonic physics. That was essentially, like, new Super Mario Bros., but, yeah. but the Sonic version. Um, whereas Sonic Mania is like Super Mario All Stars, technically, mm -hmm. uh, like like the the Super Nintendo one, just updated graphics, smoother animations. Um, yeah, it's uh, as as I heard from another YouTube channel, it's it's not just a love letter to the classic series, but a love novel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's what how someone uh, defined it. What about you? Did you play uh, Sonic Mania Super Smash? Uh, I did play some of it. I didn't complete it. Uh, really, all I have to say about the game is I always thought, you know, just from playing from, like, Generations and stuff, that I wasn't a huge fan of, like, 2D Sonic. But I realize now that Generations just didn't have good 2D Sonic because I, I love Sonic Mania from what I played of it. <laughs> um, so Sonic Forces, which came out um, a few months ago, <sighs> that, that, had, that had classic Sonic in it. So you think, oh, cool! It would just be like Sonic Mania, but in like with a 3D look to it. It's not. No. <laughs> it's it. It's really badly done in in uh, Sonic Forces. It was okay in Generations, but yeah. It's really a shame that like something just so great as Sonic Mania could come out months before a kind of a blunder like Sonic Forces. 
because I've I've heard it's not like a like a garbage fire like like Sonic Boom or Sonic Six yeah, was, but it's just like so patently average. Yeah, it's just it's just average. I, I feel like it didn't do anything that amazing, other than maybe the visuals and the story. They're, they're kind of good. Um, but the the weird thing is that is that Sonic Mania wasn't even developed by a Sonic Team. It was right. made by like a load of indie devs in partnership with Sega. Um, that's what, and, that's and, what I loved is the fact that like it's kind of this like awesome yeah. story. Is that like it is Sonic Mania is not only the highest reviewed Sonic game I think in like fifteen or so years, but like yep, it just shows that like sometimes the fans are right and like. Nintendo should start listening because <laughs> like there are lots of great Nintendo fan projects that get shut down uh, similar uh, I kind of like that Metroid 2 remake and granted we did get our own official Metroid 2 remake but um, it just kind of shows that like you know let the fans kind of take over once in a while because sometimes they've got some yeah. amazing ideas and Sonic Mania again a great game but I love the how rewarding it is to like get through a tricky platforming mm. section because you're rewarded with this like super fast speed section like and there's such a good balance between the two it, yeah. it works really well and, it, and you, you're always in control as well like there's no there's not really many automated sections mm -hmm. um but i think i think just going back to the the soundtrack what's really uh, i guess kind of inspiring to me is that the t lopes who worked on the soundtrack basically started out just like me like he just made his own little Sonic remixes on YouTube, and then he started working on fan games, mm -hmm. and then now now he's doing the music. Now, now he's done the music for the highest acclaimed Sonic game in 15 years. So, man, keep at it. You never know. Yeah, could do. <laughs> All right, what is your number four, Super Smash? My number four is Fire Emblem Shadows of Valencia. Uh, so Fire Emblem Shadows of Valencia is probably my favorite, if not second favorite, Fire Emblem game that I've played. Because uh, there's quite a few I have not played because they're super expensive. Uh, this has a good story, good characters. Uh, Gameplay is pretty good, although some of the maps are kind of annoying, you know, kind of a pain to go through. Uh, music's also great. Uh, it's actually a remake, technically, although the game that it's being remade off didn't really have a much to go off. So it really does feel like a new game overall. And I'm just super glad they did remake it in the end. Yeah, no, I've heard um, kind of cool things about that game because it's, uh, of course, based off of the second Fire Emblem game uh, on the NES. Yeah. And yeah, those games really don't have much going on uh, in them. I mean, granted, they're from the 80s, so of course they wouldn't. Yeah. But um, no, that is great to see that this Fire Emblem story that's kind of long and lost has uh, uh, been kind of brought into the modern age. And I've heard, again, it was very good, so... Yeah. Nice. I'm not much of a Fire Emblem person myself. I've only played um, whatever the first American one was on the Game Boy Advance. I think it was just called Fire Emblem. Uh, that's yeah. the only one that I've played. But um, no, that's awesome. Now, I'm sure it's probably better than Fire Emblem Warriors. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. What about you, Tom? Uh, Did you pick this game up at all? Or? Um, I didn't play. I didn't play this Fire Emblem game, but I've played. Um, I, I think I've played the demo of Fire Emblem Awakening, and then I played a little bit more like um, in a in a shop that had it as like a like a trial game sort of thing where it had okay. like a much later uh, profile. I've never been a huge fan of Fire Emblem, but I can see why it gets really popular. Yeah, um, I mean it's it's not a thing for everyone, obviously, you know. Yeah. But this game really does give me hope for whenever they make one for Switch, because this one had subtle 3D elements, and I'm really curious to see how they expand on that in the Switch game. That was actually mm. one of the things that um, kind of intrigued me about it, is like the 3D like dungeon exploring, which I heard wasn't like a super huge feature of the game. They didn't really like do that much with it. But, yeah, um, not too much. You're, you're right, and it, before too long, we probably are going to find out about Fire Emblem Switch, because you know they already have said that one's coming in 2018, and a January Direct is kind of the worst kept secret at this point so <laughs> yeah um, i don't think it'll be long before we find out about fire emblem on the switch yeah all right well i guess we'll move on to my number four and this is a game that if you asked me a couple months ago it would have struggled to make my top five list but i'm very confident in it now thanks to the updates it's gotten over the past few months i am talking about splatoon 2 um, I yeah. am not much of a multiplayer gamer in general. I've always just preferred single player experiences. Mm. But man, Splatoon 2 has really got its hooks in me. 
Um, I loved the original Splatoon on the Wii U. Um, I think this game is an upgrade in almost every way possible. Uh, I think the controls work awesome. Uh, the weapon variety is great. The different modes that they have in the game, uh, including the new Salmon Run, and one that they actually added just last week, uh, Clam Blitz. Uh, there's lots of fun to be had in Splatoon 2, like almost endless. Um, but if you count the single player content and the multiplayer content, um, Splatoon 2 is just fun. Like I come back to it almost every day. It's just so much fun. Yeah, like, like you said, um, how the game got a lot better with updates. Um, I I kind of agree with that because when I, when I bought, I first got Splatoon 2 when it quite close to when it first came out, um, and so I thought like there isn't too much here that that kind of fulfills the sequel like aspect because mm -hmm. um, it, it it it's very close to the first game, um, but then like yeah they've added the, the salmon run the uh, the the new mode which was a few weeks ago I ha I haven't actually tried that out yet I haven't I haven't been on Oh, it's fine. Two in quite a while. It's fine. Um, it's fine. But yeah. I, I loved that uh, that new level that was revealed, the the shopping center. Oh, uh, Mac level. Like the, yeah. yeah, yeah, that looks really fun. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's definitely. Um, I, I'm I'm not really a big fan of uh, third person shooters or just online shooters in general. But I think Nintendo have really uh, sort of changed the game pretty much. It, it breathes life into a very crowded genre. Because um, mm. you've got all these big, you know, Call of Duty still going strong, Battlefield still going strong, PUBG is a big thing now. Um, but mm. then games like Splatoon and Overwatch really just kind of breathe life into the online multiplayer uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, community. So it's, it's just really nice to see. And again, Splatoon really resonated with me. Um, I also want to talk about the single player campaign because I think that's something that's not talked about a whole lot in Splatoon. Um, granted, it's on the shorter side, but I think it's... I think it's much better than the first game, except the mm. final boss. I will say, I won't spoil it, but I will say I was a little let down by the final boss in Splatoon 2. Because in Splatoon 1, the final boss was amazing. Mm. Hmm. So I, I haven't played Splatoon 2 story mode yet, but I did play 1, and I, I can agree the final boss was amazing uh, for that game. But I have heard a few things about 2 that really are just a letdown for the story mode a bit. Like, it's it's weird, because if you've played Splatoon, the original Splatoon's campaign mode, Splatoon 2 is structured in almost the same way. Like, mm. you're, like you're not going to get any, like, crazy different ways of playing the game. But the new mechanics and the new, like, puzzles that you kind of have to work your way through in the campaign are actually quite, um, quite nice. They're quite a bit of fun to work through. And I actually found mm. this campaign to be harder than the first one. Um, but then it's, um, the final boss was just kind of a letdown, so... Yeah. Hmm. Mm. I, I haven't played too much of the campaign in Splatoon 2 because, um, well, number one, I just played it online in, like for the most part um, or just I would have been playing another game instead. But um, I feel like the I, I didn't enjoy the campaign, the single player campaign as much as the online because I felt that the level design was a bit blocky How and a bit you... too... How far did you actually get into it? Because it gets way oh, that, better in the yeah, um, World 3 onward. Yeah, I don't think I've got that far. But, uh, I think I've got just about to the end of World 2, I think. Okay. So I, I really need to continue with it. I, I haven't actually played it in quite a while. And there's actually a fair amount of collectibles to get uh, in the campaign mm. now, which was kind of nice for uh, completionists who like to go back and just find all the secrets. So that was nice, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Tom, let's move on to your number three. Okay, so this was originally at my number two, but um, after completing another game, it's kind of been moved down the list, and it's Super Mario Odyssey. Oh, man. It's at number three instead of number two. Um, so so but... really, really quick before you go on, because um, I have a feeling that now that we're kind of into our top three, there might be some games that are overlapped and whatnot. If a game yeah. gets brought up, if someone else brings up a game that's actually on your list further on, don't say that it's like, oh, it's my like number two, it's my number one. Just, mm -hmm. you know, you can join in, but let's leave that for a surprise, okay? Sorry, continue. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, I, I won't go on for too long, just in case it, it's in anyone else's list. But um, the, the visual presentation in Super Mario Odyssey, considering the fact that the Switch is basically a tablet, it's absolutely phenomenal visuals i'd probably say it's the best looking mario game um to date 
Um, but it's also like the, the replay value in every single world. There's always something to do, somewhere to go. Um, and I think, I think maybe because it's at my number three, I felt like not every single world was amazing. There were, there were some which were a little bit empty, um, mm-hmm. some which I didn't find too memorable. Um, the, I think the, the jungle kingdom, the, the lost kingdom. The one where Cappy gets stolen. Yeah. Um, uh, that was a little bit of a frustrating moment in the game. I didn't really have too much fun for that. Oh, in, really? In that section. I... Yeah, I, I felt like it was a little bit... Um, it, it kind of felt like the game was pad, padded out really badly. Like, they, they needed to something to make this world longer. Oh, let's just l- make Mario lose Cappy and he has to go running around the world chasing for him. But... Yeah, I don't know. That's actually that, that interesting. World didn't get me. First yeah. of all, Super Mario Odyssey is phenomenal. And I will agree mm. that there were some kingdoms that I didn't like quite as much as others, but I actually really liked the Lost Kingdom. Um, and the part that you were talking about, that where you kind of lose Cappy, I actually liked that moment because it kind of reminded me yeah. of um, Mario Sunshine, where you lose Flood. Um, first of all, I don't like Mario Sunshine that much, but I really did <laughs> like the segments where you actually lose Flood. Uh, it's more based on your... Uh, platforming skills and you don't have you don't have that kind of crutch to lean on um and great yeah. that was a shorter section in mario odyssey where you lose cappy but i actually kind of like that section it just contextually it just kind of makes sense with how you get to that kingdom so i don't know yeah, but, I, I actually personally like that one yeah there were there were other sections throughout the game where you have to like throw cappy on a scarecrow and then you have to like do an obstacle course without cappy yeah um so i i, I really get those moments and i quite like that but i think what probably made me a little bit annoyed with the the losing Cappy scene is that he kept on shouting, and there's just that same like sound effect playing in the background <laughs> as you're trying to get to it, like help, help, just going <laughs> on and on, um, and it, it's it's quite a bit of a um, strangely designed puzzle with like how where you have to ground pound and where the bird flies, um, but yeah, weird weird level design, no, not level design, weird. Um, section of the game aside um mario in general just controls really amazingly um i feel like he's, it's probably the best controlling mario um like in a, in a 3d game um and there's there's a lot of really really unique combinations with the uh, the hat com uh the hat capturing mechanic mm-hmm. like you can capture a dinosaur like a proper realistic t-rex this game is just just sheer brilliance like uh you're i was constantly being surprised while i was playing this um Mm. i like i i liked it so much that i actually was i'm one of those crazy people that 100 percent of this game um like 999 moons i totally had to do it because this game really was something special Um, i think i'm i'm at about like 600 moons i think or 700 uh, Nearly ha- there. Have you beaten that uh, final final challenge yet? Not yet. No, but uh, okay. I, I can. I, I've heard that it's absolutely brutal. It, it's tough, but if you've played Mario 3D World, I think that one actually had a tougher final challenge. Mm. What about you, uh, Super Smash? What do you think about Mario Odyssey? Is it terrible or is it actually good? <laughs> uh, I think it's really good, and I think one uh, <laughs> feature about it that no one really talks about is I love how it incorporates 2D Mario. Honestly, perfectly. Like, if you oh, yeah. to something like Sonic Forces, you know, classic Sonic kind of feels forced and shoehorned in, but classic Mario just feels right in Mario Odyssey. You mm. make an amazing point. It feels so natural to go from 3D to 2D, and those 2D segments are actually some of my favorite parts of the game, and there's a lot of them. Like, some levels have mm. multiple of them, um, which is, I, I, yeah, no, I think this game is just sheer brilliance across the board. And let's be real. Jump Up Superstar is one of the greatest songs like ever made. Oh yeah, Agreed. definitely. Like when you I, actually I won't spoil it, but like when you actually see that song like in the game, like contextually when it's played in the game, I, I won't lie, like I had some tears. Yeah. Eyes. <laughs> that's argu- that's arguably one of my favorite moments in any video game ever. The the Jump Up Superstar moment in uh in Super Mario Odyssey in New Donk City. It's oh, yeah. so good. So so phenomenal. Well, Mario Odyssey is your number three. I have a feeling it'll be on our list as well. Super Smash, what's your number three? My number three is Mario Odyssey. Oh, Oh, nice. (laughs) 
Uh, so, you know, I could just reiterate everything that's pretty much been said, but just to say it simply, the game's amazing. As far as why it's number three for me, I, I honestly can't really think of a reason. I don't think the game did anything wrong. In fact, I think compared to the next two games I have, it probably has the least amount of flaws, but I don't know. I guess the other two games just did more right that I liked. I, I actually agree, because, like, Mario Odyssey is just so... I, I'm really struck. Besides the reward for completing the game, I'm really trying to actually find flaws with Mario Odyssey. Um, mm. But I think it's just the style of game. Um, I mean, spoiler alert, it's not my number one. Um, but I, I think the style of game just... Um, I love 3D platformers, but it's not my favorite genre. At least my favorite genre that I played this year. Um, but, I mean, what can I say? Mario Odyssey knocked it out of the park in pretty much every way possible. Agreed. Mm, definitely. Well, my number three is actually not Mario Odyssey. Um, <laughs> uh, this is a game that actually, I was it was not even on my radar. Because um, I never played the original. But the sequel came out uh, in, in September... I was just hearing glowing reviews across the board. I'm talking about SteamWorld Dig 2. Um, this <laughs> game, like, holy... First of all, my favorite indie game on the Switch. But, like, what a just knockout game. Um, this game, so it's basically... I guess if you took, like, Terraria and combined it with, like, Metroidvania elements, it's kind of what you would get. But also with a bit of, like, Zelda exploration in there. This... Where do I even begin? The gameplay loop is super addictive. It, basically, it's it's a loop of mining down into the ground, returning to the surface, buying some new upgrades, and seeing where else you can get now with these new upgrades. But you're also getting new items kind of as you go throughout the game. Like, you'll get uh, bombs, you'll get a hook shot. Um, you get all these different kinds of equipment to just help you really explore the world. Um, mm. I, I really just cannot recommend this game enough to people. Uh, like when I like usually when I think about okay what were my favorite games this year like what was the most fun I had what games could I not put down and Steamworld Dig 2 is one of them like I played this game to death until I 100 percented it and I'm actually playing through it again right now uh, I thoroughly love this game I've heard, I've heard a lot of good things about the games I don't know why I haven't still tried it myself after hearing good things about I believe there's like what Three games, possibly? I, I could be remembering there, something there, wrong, though. There's Dig 1, Dig 2, and SteamWorld Heist. Oh, uh, okay. I, I haven't actually played any of them. Yeah, no, like, this, so was, I, yeah. like, this was the first one that I ever played. I just got it because I heard just so many good things about it. And you don't actually have to know... Like, you'll miss out on some references here and there, I think, to the first game. But, like, it, it, it's a great standalone story on its own. And what... So, like, one of the things I really like about the game is the collectibles, because you can find all these hidden collectibles. There's there's two types. There's the upgrade cogs that you can get, which uh, you can... The more cogs you have, the more, like, augments you can have, the more, like, upgrades you can have. So, you can throw bombs further, or you can take less fall damage or whatever. But then there's these artifacts that you can find, and they kind of help flesh out the world. But some of them are, like, direct references to other games. Like, there's one that's, like, a, um, a Splunky reference, because it's a very similar type, <laughs> type of game. Uh, I think there's, like, a Donkey Kong reference in there. Um, like, there, there are some really, like, collecting all of the... Uh, like, this is one of those games where, like, collecting all the extra collectibles or whatever isn't actually a chore. It feels rewarding the whole way through. Mm. Sounds good. So... Yeah, I guess we'll move on to your number two, Tom. Okay, so we're getting back into the uh, PlayStation, PS4 kind of uh, area. And my number two goes to Horizon Zero Dawn. Ah, nice. Um, so the the company that makes these games also worked on Killzone, apparently. Um, and I have never really been into Killzone or just any any game kind of like that. But um, when Horizon Zero Dawn was first revealed quite a while back, I didn't even know the game's name or anything about it. I just saw a girl, a female character in some incredibly nice environment. Um, and there were, it was kind of like a post-apocalyptic human world, but there were robots, like robot machines. Mm -hmm. And I thought, hmm, this, this looks good. It's like an open world. Um, I might give this a try. 
and uh, earlier this year I got it basically when it came out and I just got pretty much addicted to it um, it's very similar to uh, another game which I'm pretty sure we'll be talking about later <laughs> um, but the I think what really sold it for me is the visuals and the, the colour and all the, the environments and even the animation as well it's basically unlike anything I've ever seen in it from a video game um, like you can you can just tell into in some of the cutscenes that it it almost looks photorealistic. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's all, all the character models and, like, the lip syncing, the the lighting, like, and, like, their eyes are shiny. They look like actual eyes. Everything just looks right. Um, and I, I also like the style of how it's, like, a tribal, like, ancient tribal setting mixed in with robots. It's quite a cool, uh, what's it called? Juxtaposition? A mix? Um... <laughs> Like, oh, sorry, you go. Oh, sorry. Like, this game, uh, earlier I mentioned that Crash uh, Insane Trilogy was a big temptation to get a PS4. It, Horizon Zero Dawn is even bigger. This game mm. is, like you said, it's gorgeous to look at. It's like go It looks just so much fun to get lost in this world. Uh, and from yeah. what I've heard, it's actually got a very good story, too. Um, yeah, it, it definitely has a good story. I, I completed it uh, a few weeks ago. And the ending is so emotional. I won't spoil it, but it it's like a proper pull on your heartstrings kind of thing. Man, there's there's a lot of uh, backstory and the as as well as that, like uh, even near the start, there's so many plot twists and parts that make you like jump up from your seat. Um, it's it's absolutely incredible, and the. The way that they've um, portrayed the main character as well, uh, who's called Aloy, like a, a girl called Aloy. Yeah. Um, she is basically a full-on warrior. Like, she won't stop for anything. She'll keep on fighting. She'll climb to the top of a mountain and just stand there looking all epic. <laughs> she will She will take down a f massive dinosaur, just no problem. And she um, seems like a really awesome character, like, and not yeah, just like, definitely. like, because I, I don't want to, I don't want to delve too deep into this, but like, um, I feel like a big problem these days with like a lot of like trying to make just iconic female characters is trying to make them iconic female characters. Aloy seems like a character mm. who's awesome, who happens to be female, and that's what I really like about her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think it's not just the graphics and the story as well. I think the the gameplay is really good. The combat is uh, very uh, well. It, it's the combat's very well put together. There's a few things which feel a little bit unnecessary, like there's some there's some traps and wires you can put down to defeat the enemies. But I think I I just stick to like bow and arrows and uh, like the spear attacks that you can do. Mm -hmm. um, and it it. It feels almost like Kingdom Hearts, and I love the Kingdom Hearts series, so I, I felt like I couldn't really miss out on this game. <laughs> um, but like you've you've got your bow and arrows and stuff, and then like you can craft more arrows on the go with like menus and stuff, and it, and it's all in real time. So like when, when you craft an arrow, the game goes in slow motion, so you have to always think fast. Um, mm. But yeah, the, it, the gameplay is so like immersive and. It, it feels like you you're playing an action film. You're you're not just like. like watching an action film. Yeah. What about you? Did you play this at all, Super Smash? Uh, so I actually did play some of it. It's still on my list of things I need to get back to. Uh, but mm. I enjoyed a lot of what I played from it. You know, uh, in the story, pretty pretty early on, it gets really serious. Mm. Uh, and I think my the big reason I didn't complete it is because I was getting one shot by a lot of things, and I don't know if that's just because I was under leveled. Or I need to do more side quests. I'm not really sure. In all honesty, yeah, it, it's it's not easy. Oh, okay, so I, I'm not under. Yeah, then. it's. It, I I definitely had some problems with that, and I, I think as well, it it's taken me quite a while to complete it, because um, I I bought the game in like mid summer when it came out. Um, I, I think I think in June or May, or I think, um, and it it's taken me six months to complete it. Um, yeah. I, I think maybe I've. Maybe I had some work I needed to do, or other games to play, Mario Odyssey. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a very long and challenging game, so I can see why a lot of people don't get around to finishing it. But 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, what is your number two, Super Smash? All right, my number two is also a PS4 game, Near Automata. This game, I think for sure, is probably my favorite video game story uh, ever. Like, the characters, oh, how wow. it tells the story, everything about it is just absolutely amazing. And if you have not played it, I'd recommend, at the very least, looking up the story and the cutscenes online. Uh, the music is also phenomenal. Uh, you know, level design's pretty good. It's technically an open world game, but the whole world kind of just feels like a huge hub world, but I personally enjoy that quite a bit. Mm. I'd say the gameplay might actually be the weakest part, but that's not even really a negative because I still had a ton of fun with it, and I honestly would recommend everyone at least try and play this game. I uh, need to play this game. I, again, like, I've never wanted to get a PS4 so badly than I wanted to get here. <laughs> Um, like Nier Automata, like you mentioned the music, and I, like, I'm actually someone who tries to stay away from listening to video game music until I actually play something. But when I heard it was the same composer as Attack on Titan, like I had to listen to it. Um, and it's oh, it's something really special. Yeah. Now I I haven't played Nier Automata, um, but I've I've kind of seen is is the gameplay kind of like Kingdom Hearts, like yeah. like fighting star? Because I, I've seen someone on YouTube. Um, who who does a lot of Kingdom Hearts content, and they they played near Automata and they said they didn't like it, mm. and I'm um, I'm a little bit confused as to why that is. I don't know, maybe it's the story or you know, they I'm might not also have liked. like a really big you know Kingdom Hearts guy, and for me, like I don't know, for me it felt like a more dark Kingdom Hearts without the Disney stuff. In all honesty, mm. like so I don't know that that's actually a bit weird. Yeah, I, so it was a little bit confusing. But. It's interesting you guys say Kingdom Hearts because when I look at it, the first thing I think of is Bayonetta. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. It's it's a lot more of um sort of straightforward hack and slash. Uh, yeah. That's kind of what Bayonetta and I think Devil May Cry as well goes mm-hmm. for that sort of approach. But hmm. you, you also mentioned the open like again, like I don't know much about the game itself. I've just kind of really listened to the music. But it's open world. I actually didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So it has like I forget if it's, like, four or five main, like, mini hub worlds that you can go f- through for from, like, the main city. But they're not really big, in all honesty. So I, I even hesitate to call it open world. Because while it is definitely open and everything, it's not super huge. But I think that works really good for the game. Okay, mm. cool. Wow. All right, are we ready to move on to my number two? Yeah. So my number two, we've already talked about it to death, Mario Odyssey. Um, yeah. I mean, what can I say that we haven't said already? Like, the controls are just spot on, both the buttons and the motion controls, in my opinion. The music is phenomenal. It has a great range of songs from, you know, jazzy songs to ambient tracks. The sense of grandeur and adventure is just unmatched. And mm. this is actually my favorite Mario game of all time. Um, it's yeah, like, it's definitely my favorite for, as well. For a long, long time, ever since I was like little, it was always Super Mario World. Mario Odyssey <laughs> has finally supplanted it. Uh, I could not get enough of this game when it launched, um, and I just I couldn't put it down. Like that entire like that entire weekend, like I had like three Halloween parties to go to or something. So I was like, as soon as I was home, I was put, putting Mario Odyssey back on and just putting as much time as I could into this game. I, I could not put it down. All the way up until I 100 percent it. And even though I have 100 percent it, I still play around with the photo feature sometimes. Uh, I think that's a lot of fun mm. to mess around with. So, And I got to say, um, again, I won't spoil it, but that final boss, holy oh, cow. Oh, the final boss music. Yeah. The, the music the, in the that. The music, the, the it, atmosphere, the gameplay mechanics, it was awesome. My jaw dropped, like, full on to the ground. Just, I, I didn't expect a vocal song to play at the end like another one but it, it's it's incredible yeah like, um it, and then the funny thing is like <laughs> if this like that same kind of like final ending like with like a song and like just like everything going over the top if this was a sonic game it would get crucified for doing stuff mm. like that but because it's mario and it, oh, it just works so well okay <sighs> well yeah i guess we've already talked about mario odyssey a lot yeah. What is Tom... Oh, well, okay, actually, you know what? There's one glaring omission. I'm pretty sure we're all sharing the same game of the year here. Yeah. Do we all have Breath of the Wild as our game of the year? Bubsy yeah. the Woolly Strike Back. 
No, not really. No, no. I was it's actually, Zelda Breath of the Wild. I was really close to putting ukulele on my list, actually. <laughs> oh, ukulele. No, I'm, jo- I'm totally joking. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Uh, Breath of the Wild. Um, yeah, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Tom, you go first. You go first. Okay, so I think, without a doubt, this is probably one of the finest video games ever made. Um, like In my opinion, anyway, I've, there's probably people that disagree or don't agree fully. Um, but this is... A such a massive step for the Zelda series in general. It's gone from like segmented areas in massive in a massive world to just being one giant area. Um, and they've they've changed a lot of how everything works. You can now climb anything. Um, some of the items have been taken away in change for like a new uh, like the state the runes that you get in the this little Sheikah Slate tablet. Um, and the the puzzle, like the dun- the puzzle elements and the dungeons and stuff, have been more like simplified and sort of sprinkled around the world rather than just main temples and, and things like that. Um, so that adds quite a lot of um, emergent gameplay. Like anywhere you go, there's a lot of uh, puzzles that could pop out of nowhere, um, and like thing things you need to think outside the box to do. Breath of the um, Wild is. Uh, we were talking about this a bit earlier about Mario Odyssey, where we don't. Like, I I agree that it's probably the least flawed game on my list. But mm. what Breath of the Wild gets right, it does so immaculately. It's actually insane. Like, and when I was thinking of my game of the year list, I was like, all right, like, like I mentioned with Steamroll Dig too. What games could I not put down? And I think back to that opening weekend, like that opening like two weeks where Breath of the Wild first came out. I every second I could I was putting into Breath of the Wild. I've never felt this way about an open world game. I don't like open world games, but Breath of the Wild just nails everything an open world game needs to nail. You know, you've got rewards for exploring. You've got simplified mm. customization mechanics. You've got a sense of mystery. You've got like great controls. You've got so many shocking little details that like if you think something can work, it probably will work yeah. in that game. There, there's there's, a, there's essentially no limits to anything, that, other, other than the start of the game when you when you're on the like the opening area. But after that, like you can go anywhere, do anything, make anything. Like oh, the oh, yeah. it's Super Smash talk talk. Oh my god, we gotta, everyone's got to gush <laughs> uh, about this. I mean, Breath of the Wild is probably the first. Probably the first game I've ever put 120 hours to that didn't like force me or give me any missions to do with that 120 hours. I just enjoyed playing the game so much. And I don't know about any of you, but I actually made it a point for myself for the main game and most of the DLC, not all of it, to not look anything up if I have had a problem. Just to keep going, keep doing until I figure it out. Mm. Yeah, I was the exact same way. I the only time I actually had to look something up was um, there was one shrine. I, I don't, this is a bit of an infamous one, but it's the Constellation Shrine. Um, I don't know if you Const- guys remember it. Oh, I, mean, I think I, I did that think, one, yeah. I think I do. I was just, where, where, where is it on the map? It's in the Korok Forest, I believe. Um, mm. And uh, um, it, basically it involves you like looking at these like different um, constellations of like star patterns on the wall. Oh, I remember um, that. I was, just, I was just overthinking it. That is the one... That is the one time I actually had to look something up in Breath there of the Wild, were... at least that I can remember. Because I, I think, really... I... sorry, go yeah. On. Oh yeah, I, I've I've looked up quite a lot of things online as well. Just especially, it's usually just the shrines. I feel like anything in the overworld, I can either try and accomplish on my own or just give up and do something else. But um, the shrines, I've usually looked online if if I ever needed any help. Um, there was a particular shrine in the in the new DLC that came out, which was it just completely st- just stumped me. I mm. I didn't know the Wait, solution. Is, is it the one where you have to build a staircase out of blocks and ice blocks? Yep, <laughs> it's that one. That that shrine that shrine can screw itself because it's just <laughs> it, it basically right. You you've got these two metal blocks and you've got like the wall the wall of water and you. You have to like lift them up either with like the cryonis or the uh, the uh, magnesis thing to lift them up, but 
for some reason I couldn't figure out how to get them high enough. <laughs> and like I spent about an hour trying to work out how to do it. See that one? I, I actually we talked about this a little bit on Twitter, but what I actually ended up doing was, and this just kind of yeah. speaks, this just kind of speaks to Breath of the Wild as a whole, like how many because everything's physics based, physics based, like all the puzzles are based on physics and like mm. like what you can do with your magnesis and your stasis and whatnot. What I ended up doing was I got somewhat high up on that wall of water with the cryonis blocks, but then I just lifted up um, a magnesis block. And I, sw I quickly switched to my stasis, and it just stayed there in the air. And I just climbed on that, and I solved the puzzle. Yeah, totally not I, the way you're supposed to do it, but like I, I tried to do that, but I kept on failing. I kept on like missing the, the uh, the, the marker that you have to like, uh, click on the on the block to yeah. actually st to actually lock it in place. I kept on missing it. It, it is very so, precise. It's very quick. so. I I figured that like okay, maybe this isn't this isn't the correct solution. I'm gonna do this the proper way. Um, but, oh, yeah. Like, and um, there's just so many little mind-blowing things like that that you can, that actually work. Like, another example for me, when I was playing through the game for the first time, um, like, th there was one temple I found, or one shrine I found, where you basically had to, and there's a couple of these, but you basically had to make a current of electricity run from one side of the room to the other using the oh, yeah. boxes provided. And I couldn't figure it out. But I was thinking, huh. What if I dropped some of my metal weapons and used them as like, as like connections for these like broken wires on the ground? And it totally mm. worked. Like I <laughs> love stuff like that. Like no game, I don't think there's any other game that can like create so many possibilities that just leave so many possibilities for the players it's, to discover. It's so it's so immersive. There's electrical currents going through metal. It's <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think I think I I managed to do that puzzle okay, but I don't think I can remember how I did it. Um, yeah, I can't remember how I actually managed to complete that. I think it was just like experimentation and, like you said, the uh, the metal weapons. Um, but yeah, and I also like the the motorbike as well. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was that was added into the, that was uh, what were Nintendo thinking. <laughs> it's such a cool idea, but how did someone think of this? Like, what if we added a motorbike to Zelda Breath of the Wild, and it just works? Well, you can. <laughs> I think that was <laughs> actually. I think that was actually in some of the concept art for Breath yeah, of the Wild. Yeah, I, uh, I heard about that. So it's kind of cool to actually see it come to fruition uh, later on in the DLC. I, I like it. Though. I never, I never thought they'd actually add it because the there were there were a lot of other crazy like crazy things in that concept art. There were like tiny village people like the minish cap um, there, were, there were alien invaders in that yeah there were there was like a ufo above the overworld like so that can't fit in zelda breath of the wild surely not but the motorbike does so <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, so i i, I want to talk about um i want to talk about the challenge factor of this game too because mm. holy cow like so i like i like the i, I love the wind waker actually and Twilight Princess is, it's all right. Um, but like a lot of the modern Zelda games, like you had to go out of your way to die in those games. Whereas in Breath of the Wild, mm. I was dying constantly, at least for like yeah. the first like half of the game or so. Once you get more heart containers, more armor, it gets better. But like, I was dying constantly. And I loved it for that because it actually made you think like, okay, how am I going to take care of this enemy base or like am i gonna sneak around and bombard them with arrows or am i gonna throw metal boxes at them from afar like what am i gonna do here uh, just mm. so many smart ideas yeah i mean a lot of pe people consider the what's its name i want to say it's called light bright ganon or something like that the electric one oh, to uh, be the hardest boss in the main game and honestly oh, it's my favorite that. because of that I I did the uh, the Rito boss first the, the 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 one where you're in in the air basically I did I yeah. did that one first and I, I found that I think the easiest but, yeah. really yeah, you actually did that same. one first because a lot of people do the Zora one first that's the one I did first I did yeah yeah I I went to the Zora one first but there was the uh, the there was like that mission you have to do where you have to get some lightning arrows but there's oh, a line right, right. there's a line all in the way so yeah. I thought maybe I'm a little bit under leveled. Uh, like I, I thought I had to fight the line, the Lionel for some reason, um, but I, I instead like didn't go to the Zora one, and I did the the Rito one instead. 
I, I, I think it ca- it catched my attention a lot more. It was it was flying. So I basically so I went to the Zor- so when I first got off the plateau, I just went on a huge world tour. I wanted to find as many shrines as I could. Um, yeah. So I got I got to the Azora one eventually, probably like thirty ish hours in, and then I went. I loved that Divine Beast first of all. Like um, the Divine Beasts overall, like as a whole, the, I can take them or leave them. I do prefer re- regular Zelda dungeons, but I actually mm. really did like the uh, Varuta, uh, the first div- the elephant one, the ele- elephant Divine Beast. I thought that was really yeah. cool. I was like, man, I want to do more of these. And I immediately, after I beat that one, immediately hunted down the next one, which was uh, Von Naboris, the Thunderflight Ganon. And I was like, oh my god, this is so much harder. Like, do they scale in difficulty or something? Like, depending on which ones mm-hmm. you've done? Nope, I just happened to go to the hardest one. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the hardest one for me was the uh, the one in the volcano, R- Rudania, I think it is. Oh, really? Um yeah, because I, I, it was the most different one for me personally. Because the way you get to it is like a stealth mission, and then when you're inside, it's pitch black. So there's there's quite a twist in that one, I think. I actually um, that's so interesting that we can have this conversation and like which one was the, mm. that was actually the easiest one for me. Uh, like I think oh, I, really? I think I beat that temple in like 15 minutes, and then I figured out Varudania's uh, or whatever it was, uh, Fireblood Cannon. I beat that I th- one like, I think, pretty much right away. I think maybe it does change. So, like, the one that you go to first is, like, tweaked, so it's a little bit easier. And then when you... The the one that you go last is harder. I, I, it probably is like that. Like, really, really hidden in the game. The difficulty actually changes in each dungeon. It could, maybe. Um, I don't know. Could could be. Because I, I did Varudania third. I did, I did uh, Vameto, the Rito one. I did that one last. Hmm. You know, the difficulty in Breath of the Wild, now that I think about it, really reminds me of, like, Pokemon Red, where def- depending on which starter you choose, it gets harder or easier. That's true. And uh, if you started out with Charmander, like, you're kind of screwed for the first two gyms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think um, the the difficulty in Zelda Breath of the Wild probably comes from the fact that the game doesn't hold your hand quite a lot. Like, a lot of the Zelda games, especially Ocarina of Time, and a little bit of Wind Waker, um, but the game doesn't like it. It gives you basic controls and like how to navigate your menus and how to like change your weapon and throw weapons. It, it, it gives you button inputs, but it doesn't tell you blatantly that, for example, lightning can destroy you if you have a metal weapon. No, and that you, is so genius. Like, like you, can... you, you, fi- you figure that out yourself. Like, if you see sparks, you think, oh, what, what's happening? And then you get zapped, and then you die. It's like, you can okay, choose... maybe I shouldn't do that. You can choose how much you want to know and how much you don't want to know. Because mm. if you don't want a map, if you just want to go by environmental, pos- environmental hints and, like, signposts and whatnot, you can do that. You don't have to have a map. If you, the, mm. uh, first of all, that shrine indicator or the shrine beeper or whatever that you get, I turned that off right away. I didn't use that at all. Um, just because, first of all, I found it a little annoying, but I also just kind of wanted to stumble upon these shrines just kind of on my own. Mm. Hmm. I think I, I had the, the shrine indicator on for a few little moments in the journey, just, just for the shrines that I really couldn't find. Um, but I think for the most part, like near the start and the end of the game, I, I had it turned off purely because I just wanted to look for them myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely feels very... Um, th- there's, there's a puzzle element to just find the shrines, but then the shrines are a puzzle in themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... There's, it's... Oh, I, I feel like we've just described the entire game in like 15 <laughs> minutes. I just, mean, there's so much to just talk about. We could go on forever and ever. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Well, game of, game of the year. Oh, like yeah. easily. Like I, I don't even want to. Like I, this is nothing against like my other games on the list, but Breath of the Wild. Like I, for a little while when Mario Odyssey first came out, I had some doubt, but after about a week, I was like, no, I still think Breath of the Wild is my favorite game this year, and mm. one of my favorite games of all time, frankly. Say definitely. Yeah. Well, I'm still you... waiting. I'm still waiting for my cousin to get it though. So. So, do you guys have any games that didn't quite make your list that you want to give a shout out to? Ah, uh, I guess pretty much all the other fighting games this year because they were all subjectively better than Marvel's Capcom Infinite. But I just had the most fun with that game, so I kind of had to put it on my list. Okay, 
What about you, Tom? I think I think an honourable mention on my list is probably Kingdom Hearts 2.8 on the PS4. <laughs> um, now that it's that's essentially two games and a cutscene in on one disc. <laughs> Um, but I think, like, one of the games already released in 2012, which was uh, Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance, and that was a 3DS game put, ported onto the PS4. And th- that's really fun to play, but I think the the highlight of this collection game was the, the new uh, chapter, which was yeah. done in the, new, in the new graphics engine and everything. And that was... It ju- just about didn't make this list. Um, purely because it was only a teaser for Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, it was just like a like a playable demo, like a first slice kind okay. of... Yeah. Yeah. So I have... So we already talked about Sonic Mania. That is one of my honorable mentions. But I have to give a huge... The, like, Spectre of Torment and this, and this game were so close. Metroid Samus Returns on the 3DS was actually really, really good. Um, mm. I played Metroid 2 back in the day. Never could beat that game because it is so hard, so complex. There's no map. Like there's like I loved it, but I couldn't figure anything out. Samus Returns. Th- th- first of all, there's no reason to go back to the original Metroid 2 now. But Samus Returns is what Metroid fans have wanted and frankly kind of deserved for the past like years now. <laughs> um, the you know it, again, it's Metroid 2 at its core, but it does so much new with the game that it's just it, it was a joy to play through. Mm. So, I also have one other honorable mention, and this is a bit of a controversial game, but um, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle is kind of the real deal. That game is oh, actually yeah. good. I I still have to get... I, I've still got to get around and, and actually play that game. Um, I, need to, I need to get it. The, like, the Mario there, and Rabbids. There's yeah. quite a few, like surprising like oh wow they actually went there like kind of moments in the game um <laughs> I, I won't spoil them because some of them are, there's some really really good like holy crap like i can't believe this is actually happening in a mario game uh it's moments like that but it's definitely a, a title that like if you're a switch owner you gotta have it yeah i mean i still have to personally buy the game because at the time when it came out there was a lot of other stuff i had to buy but i've seen the developers just on twitter and at e3 and everything and they Seem like they put a lot of heart into this game, and I, I really mm. do have to pick it up at some point. Oh, like they, there is definitely a lot of love. Like you, you can tell that, like the um, I forget his name, but the, uh, the creative, the guy who was crying at E3. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, it, it, it's very obvious that he loves everything that Miyamoto and Nintendo has just done with the Mario series, and just some really great references, some really great, some really great original ideas too. And I am someone who never really liked the Rabbids beforehand, but yeah. this game actually, like, especially the opening cutscene, like, it, it, if you're not going to play the game, at least look up the opening cutscene of this game. It's quite hilarious. Mm. <laughs> well, I think we're done here, unless you guys have anything else. Uh, um, would you I've, like I've... to see the Rabbids in Smash? Oh, yes. <laughs> got, got have, got yeah, I, I think they'd fit in Smash Bros. I, I think that would be quite good. Well, 2018 is just around the corner. Smash Switch, it's got to be happening. Like, I, I really feel it's got to be happening next year, so who knows? I hope. Next year next year is the year of Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, oh yes. my it's god. Finally, finally coming out. You poor, oh, poor souls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think well, that's it for here. So tell the people where they can find you at. Tom, why don't you start us off? Okay, so my channel is just SilverTom93. Um... And you can find me not only on YouTube, but also Twitter, where, where, where I'm, I guess, a little bit more active. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm on Twitter, same username as my YouTube one. Very nice. And Super Smash 77? Uh, my YouTube is just Super Smash 77. You can find me pretty actively on Twitter at the Super Smash 77 and on Instagram at Super Smash 77. I usually post on Instagram once a month, so be prepared. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> So, of course, thank you guys again for joining me. This is a lot of fun. Um, Yeah, so 2017 has been awesome. Hope to see you all in 2018. All right, see you later, guys. Bye. See you. Bye.